Now, from the studios of Into Tomorrow in Miami, this is ITTV. Our next guest is from a company that created a platform allowing you to find local and global opportunities to engage in science. And that certainly got our attention. We thought, let's have the founder of Science Near Me and Sci Starter, Darlene Cavalier. Welcome into tomorrow, Darlene. How are you? Thanks, Dave. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Well, you certainly got our attention. We love anything that we can do to help promote science and tech and all the STEM subjects, if you will. And this sounded like a very cool idea because it might be some things, it sounds to me, that are around the corner in your own city, in your own town or neighborhood that you may not even be aware of. Or, correct me if I'm wrong, if you're traveling, maybe there's a nice family outing. And while you're out and about, you want to check into what science might be near you. Am I correct? That's exactly right. These are ways to um, help people find opportunities to engage in science. Things from citizen science, where you can participate in authentic research, more like crowdsourcing, to upcoming science festivals, astronomy on tap events that are happening, cool things happening at museums, all around you. And we're, we're starting with 20 core partners who offer opportunities like that. Um, and then in the coming months and years, hopefully you find thousands and thousands and thousands of these opportunities. And the most important thing is that you find one that's right for you. Oh, for sure. And I think what a great opportunity for all of the museums and any organization involved in science. Of course, they'd want to let folks know what's available. So how do you work with them? I mean, do they, you know, to be honest, uh, pay a fee or something to be listed with you? Or uh, how, how do you connect with some of these places around the country and around the world? Yes, great question. Well, we're very fortunate that this is uh, supported by the National Science Foundation. Nice. So the 20, yes, which is amazing. So there's a lot of research that comes out of this too. So we work with 20 core partners and a lot of our work in the past two years has been on the back end, the technical side of setting up connections to museums and festivals and citizen science and all other ways of engaging in science and looking for ways that as they add their opportunities to wherever they're already adding them, usually it's maybe a museum's website, for example, that Science Near Me is able to easily scan and pull in from those websites. And what this does is it sets up a sustainable model that the museum doesn't have to keep adding all of their events and programs to multiple sites. So as things are updated in the source, it too is updated in Science Near Me. And so we thought this is probably the best way to go about creating a very open, uh, very uh, transparent and a super scalable and sustainable way to keep Science Near Me alive and bring these opportunities that are local that are up to date and active to millions of people. And of course, it sounds like it's perfect for anyone of any age, but especially now for parents and grandparents, always looking for fun things to engage the kids. And it's not just a matter of a playground. I mean, especially if your kids are hopefully interested in science and technology, you want to know what all is available wherever you are or wherever you're traveling and and help, help them truly engage in these uh, science and tech arenas. I think it's terrific. How is it that you and your team decided to create such a platform? Can I assume maybe you've got kids too and they're thinking, where can we go? There's got to be something nearby and sort of a light bulb went off kind of thing. Yes, we all come at it from different angles. All of us do represent some field of public engagement in science. So mine is in the citizen science realm of helping scientists advance important areas of research by doing small acts. It may be it may be bird watching. I'm looking outside of my window. It may be bird watching and sharing my observations with ornithologists. It might be that I'm curious or concerned about um, air quality in my neighborhood. And by getting involved in projects, I'm learning about the air quality in my neighborhood, but I'm also helping to advance research that hopefully ends up protecting my air and the air that I breathe here. So we all came at it from our different um, domains of public engagement in science. And we all are kind of sitting in the same meetings of looking at similar questions. How do people get involved? Why do they get involved? What are they learning from this? And realize, why are we doing this in separate siloed websites? 
Why aren't we sharing our offerings to make it easier for people to find these opportunities and therefore make it actually more important in the ways that we approach researching how people engage, what they're learning, what gaps and opportunities to engage exist, where there might be um, duplications and so forth. So that's how it came together. But for me personally, um, I wanted to know how somebody without a formal science degree could actually engage in science in meaningful ways. I also do have kids, um, but I want to just like really point this out for, for grandparents and adults and others. Science near me and science engagement opportunities are for everyone. And so there's projects that help accelerate research on Alzheimer's just by playing online games. Um, I mentioned the air quality one. There's just something for everyone and bringing them together in science near me is a very uh, long sought after vision that our team has had. And we're just thrilled to not only launch it, to have the support from the National Science Foundation, but also to, to you for helping us spread the word about it. Oh, and it's our pleasure. And I think your very easy to remember website of sciencenearme.org. One of the first things I noticed jumps out at me is what would you like to do near you? And that's the key. It's like, well, I didn't even know this existed. I mean, certainly we might know about a planetarium or a science museum because it's got, you know, a lot of PR. We see it on the news, maybe in the neighborhood or somewhere in our town. But sometimes it's, it's the smaller organizations that you can also learn an awful lot from. And since it sounds like it's not just for kids and students, they probably benefit the most from it. But it's for anyone who just is curious about what's going on. That's exactly right. If you're curious, you're going to find a lot of things on science near me. That's exactly right. And, I'm and, and concerned, uh, you know, you're concerned about some issues and you might want to get involved in being part of the solution through science. You're going to find something on science near me. Terrific. I, I like how right away you can do search for what and near what distance, you know, drop down menu, 25 miles or farther, whatever. Uh, and what dates you're interested in, too, because that makes a difference if you're going to be traveling. And then you list what science is available near you. I think that's that's terrific. Uh, what do you hope to accomplish in the long run uh, through this particular resource? I think it's terrific and clearly people can learn an awful lot. I think the more that we can make it obvious and apparent to people that these are, are opportunities that not only just invite the public to get involved, but that actually benefit from and sometimes can only happen with participation from the public. So as I mentioned, you know, my expertise is in citizen science. When you have a scientist who is looking for somebody perhaps in Philadelphia to share data because that scientist and their team can't get there to observe something like uh, dragonfly swarms or or other neat natural phenomena that's happening. People are actually needed to be part of those projects. It can't happen without their help. Uh -huh. And so fostering these connections with more and more people can change the mindset. For me, as I mentioned, how can somebody without a formal science degree get involved in science? I have never heard of these opportunities before. It completely changed my life. I look at things differently now. I look at ways of thinking, it's not up to a scientist to figure out these solutions for me. I actually can be part of these solutions too. Mm -hmm. And so it's changed what I read. It's changed how I explore things. You kind of start thinking more critically like a scientist. So one, just bringing these opportunities to people more and more and letting them know it's not just for kids. It doesn't matter if you went to college. It certainly doesn't matter if you have a science degree. All of these things are open and available to you. And also, you know, the National Science Foundation is funded through your tax dollars. So you also have a right to be part of all of these opportunities that we're sharing with you. Third, it's to make um, the people who are producing these events and programs and so forth, we hope that Science Near Me alleviates some of the, the financial pressure of trying to market and recruit people. Because that's a, that's a serious um, constraint. So we hope that this benefits them by just like bringing these opportunities to more people. And four, and this is a really important one, this is de designed to expand and catalyze new forms of research that we hadn't been able to do before because all of these websites were not connected. So we miss really good opportunities to understand how somebody who just gets involved in a science festival moves on to do deeper forms of engagement and does this change their pathway like it's changed mine. 
it sounds like it's very much a win-win-win kind of scenario. And I certainly hope that every parent especially, and every grandparent especially, that are listening and watching our video right now, realizes this is a great opportunity for you and your kids and grandkids. Take advantage of it and visit sciencenearme.org. We'll get you there when you visit us at intotomorrow.com. And Darlene, one of the quick things that, that I mentioned in your intro is that you're the founder of Science Near Me and SciStarter. Real quick, what is SciStarter? SciStarter is one of the partner project, um, teams or opportunity providers that feeds all of its data over to Science Near Me. So on SciStarter, you'll only find opportunities to engage in research. That's the citizen science component. So we aggregate from all over the world different research projects that need help from the public. These are a lot of the crowdsourcing projects. Mm -hmm. And then we feed all of that. We're one source of information that feeds all of those opportunities over to Science Near Me. So you can imagine how large Science Near Me will become over the coming years. And I also should add that there's a lot of partners that are involved in this. Researchers from Oregon State University, from um, from Columbus, Ohio, a museum there, um, COSI, COSI, sorry, um, uh, the Science Festival Alliance, the Association of Science and Technology Centers. Um, so there's a bunch of us that came together to create Science Near Me. Terrific. And of course, somebody else that might be listening or watching that is involved in science and technology that is not yet listed at sciencenearme.org should certainly contact you as well. So Darlene Cavalier, the founder of Science Near Me, thanks so much for spending a few minutes with us. We're delighted to help you build your site because it's only going to help a lot more of us to find these cool things. Thank you. And thank you so much for having us and shining a light on our work. It, it's our pleasure. Keep up the great work. ScienceNearMe.org. And you'll see what Darlene and her team are up to as they continue to grow dramatically. And we look forward to that as they grow further into tomorrow. Be sure to visit us at intotomorrow.com. We'll get you to her site and all of our guests, as always. And, of course, more Into Tomorrow coming up. Don't go away right here on the Advanced Media Network.